Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm gonna be trying out this super cool and super fun looking gradient puzzle. This is by the brand Four Point Puzzles, who are Canadian based and they've been around a few years since about the middle of 2019. Um, and this is actually gonna be the first time I'm trying the brand, so I'm pretty excited. They've actually been on my sort of want to try wish list for quite a while now. And I've always thought their designs are pretty cool. This has definitely been the one that's caught my eye the most. So really excited that I have this one in my collection now. Um, and yeah, they're quite passionate about sort of like promoting and showcasing like design and contemporary artworks through their puzzles. They also are sort of known for having a lot of like planet type puzzles. So I think they had the moon and I think recently they just brought out like all the planets in the solar system, like a whole range. So that's pretty cool. So this particular puzzle is called Fade by the Swedish artist Sarah Andreasen. And I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, and this one's 1000 pieces and it's actually a square puzzle. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I usually don't get to do a lot of square ones. So it's always fun to do something a bit different. And as you can see, it features this really cool and just a fun looking 3D kind of uh, gradient. So it kind of reminds me of like as if someone had squeezed out toothpaste from the tube, like it sort of looks like that. And I really love the colors. Like I love this sort of blue here and then how it fades into this like sea foam green and then sort of yellows and, and then it's sort of goldeny orange. Like I think it just looks really cool. So in a sec, we are going to have a closer look at the packaging and unbox it. Of course, look at the pieces and then we'll get into some puzzling. And I'll also let you know my thoughts on the puzzle and the brand. So I quite like the look of this packaging. It's like very cool and designery looking and quite sleek. So it's a really nice sort of sturdy, like thick feeling cardboard box. Like it feels very smooth. Um, it's a nice square shape and it's not too thick. Like uh, I think, you know, it's a reasonable size box for storing and also, I guess, putting your puzzle pieces in if you want to do that. Um, and then the front has the entire image on it. I don't think the blue around the edge, like the border here is part of the actual image. Uh, I think it might end where the white uh, ends. So, but we'll find out, I guess. And then on each of the sides we've got here, uh, so a smaller version of the whole image. We've got the name of the puzzle, the name of the artist, uh, 1000. And then we've got the size. So it's got inches and centimeters, 25 by 25 inches. Um, I'll pop this up the top of the screen as well. And that's equivalent to 63.5 by 63.5 centimeters and it says square puzzle. And then it says four point puzzles, um, like the name of the company. It's also kind of cute because both that and the 1000 are like in the gradiated colors that feature it in the puzzle design. So yeah, it looks very cool. And that information is repeated on each of the sides. So yeah, same, same on each side. And then on the back, whoop, this way, we have a lot of that same information. So we've got the company name and slash logo. We've got the name of the puzzle, name of the artist, 1000. We've got the size. We've also got the whole image here again. And we have this nice blurb telling us a bit about the artist and their work. So. That's nice, putting a bit more focus on the artist, not just having a pretty image. Then it's got a little call to action where you can visit their website to see the whole collection of puzzles. And then just has a little copyright of them and the artist. Um, down here it talks about like the recycled materials it's made from, choking hazard. Um, it says designed in Canada, printed in China. Um, and then just sort of like the address and barcode and stuff. So let's pop this open cool and then the inside is just plain white and then we've got a yeah this is okay pretty basic but we've got a nice big bag of puzzle pieces so excited to open that up in a sec and yeah and then the inside is just plain white also there's nothing around the edges inside like on this part of the box it's just plain blue so yeah, um, this looks like a, it's quite a sturdy plastic bag, but yeah, it's not really designed to be reused, but you could if you wanted, I guess. But I guess we'll cut it open and have a look at the pieces. 
So I really like how the pieces look. They're like the colors are very kind of vintage, retro 1950s, uh, like this sort of pastel minty green kind of makes me think of like my grandmother's 1950s kitchen. So yeah, but I quite like these colors. I think they look really, really cool. Um, and the pieces look very sort of standard traditional. Um, so we've got a lot of these sort of standard shapes like two tab, uh, three tab, the sort of inverted one. I'll pop an image on the top of the screen as well. One tab, uh, what else we got? I mean, I guess we've probably got all the, the usual suspects. Um, yeah, oh, another two tab. Um, yeah, and so the pieces also have like a bit of variation to them. Um, so each one sort of has little subtle, uh, interesting ways it's been cut, even though it's still like a standard shape. So hopefully that means you're not gonna have any false fits. So, you know, I, that's kind of important when you're doing like a gradient with like subtle color variations, like you don't really want false fits, otherwise it's gonna make it a bit more difficult. So yeah, hopefully we won't have that, but we'll see. Um, and then as for like, you know, an individual piece, or the pieces themselves. The back is a lovely sort of brownie gray board, uh, no extra paper. So just a nice, very simple cardboard back. And then the thickness is a fairly nice kind of medium thickness, I guess, like yeah, maybe, maybe medium to thick, medium. Um, feels pretty sturdy with like a bit of gentle, uh, trying to bend it gently, like it feels pretty strong. Um, I'm sure I could bend the tabs if I wanted to, but let's not force that. But yeah, feels feels nice. And then the top is a very smooth cardboard. It's sort of almost glossy, like they're not glossy, but I think because the cardboard or paper top is like so smooth, it does create a little bit of gloss or sheen. Like I can definitely get sheen on it from the ring light. Um, so I'll have to see what it's like puzzling like in front of me whether it's gonna be a problem or not. Um, yeah, so hopefully it won't be too glary, because uh, again, that would make, you know, subtle color variations uh, difficult to see. But yeah, I guess we'll just, we'll find out. Um, of course, I'll let you know what all of, uh, you know, what the puzzling experience is like partway through doing the puzzle. So yeah, we'll see. Um, and then what else? Um, yeah, there was some puzzle dust in the bag. I don't know, like, I can't see too much at the bottom of the box. I don't know how much of a problem it's gonna be. I guess, again, we'll find out. And I also haven't really seen any damaged pieces. So, so far, so good. Um, I'll let you know if I find any, but otherwise, yeah, at the moment, oh, I guess there, that one has like a tiny bit of, uh, the most minuscule bit of bent cardboard on like one little corner, but it's so like minor, really. Um, but I guess I'll let you know if there's anything major. Um, so uh, before I get into puzzling, I guess the question is, is how am I going to go about doing this? Um, well, one, I have actually measured uh, my sort of regular puzzle board and the size of this puzzle, and this is absolutely, absolutely not going to fit. Um, it's a bit wider, unfortunately, so I will have to get out my big puzzle board, um, but that's okay. And yeah, in terms of like putting this together, um, I'm not going to do the white first. I think that's probably gonna be the last thing I do just because I think that's gonna be a lot of, you know, uh, just going by a piece shape to fill in like these white bits here on the border. Um, I mean, I guess if there's any like white, or like this one, this is a like white edge, but it has a bit of green on it. So pieces like that might get placed early on, but yeah, otherwise I'm not gonna go out of my way to do it. Um, but yeah, I don't know exactly how to go about this, except I'm probably gonna, you know, maybe pull out this blue here because it sort of stands out to me and it's only like this dark, darkest parts, quite a small section. Um, and then maybe, you know, I'll find these lighter blues and the sort of sea foam green, but it's a little bit tricky, this puzzle. It's not your sort of standard from one side to the other, color to color. It's you know, because it's swirly, we've got, and 3D, we've got these like light and dark or, you know, light and shadow areas. So that makes it a bit more tricky. Um, so yeah, some areas might get done before others, like maybe the light green would get done before this sort of dark shadowy green. Um, I think it's gonna be a very intuitive process and I'm guessing just gonna have to sort of, 
you know, make some decisions as I go, you know, as to what seems like the best or easiest way to go about doing it. So I guess once again, uh, you know, through uh, once we get to like the sort of midpoint or during the midway thoughts, you know, you'll be able to see sort of how I've gone about doing this and how I'm finding it. So, yeah. So speaking of puzzling, I guess we better get into some puzzling. So it's the next day when I'm filming this and I have to say, I think this is looking really cool. I really think the sort of 3D like effect or look makes it a really fun gradient. It just, yeah, it makes it a bit different and I really love this sort of like swirly toothpaste kind of cool pattern. Like I, yeah, I think it just makes the gradient just more interesting and more fun to put together. Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed this image so far and I've had a fairly good puzzling experience. There were a couple of issues, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, but yeah, to get to this point, uh, including sorting, I think it was two hours and 25 minutes. So I think that's not bad considering I'm pretty sure this is sort of like about the halfway mark. So yeah, I don't know if the next part, which is a lot of, I guess, uh, whites and oranges and reddy oranges and yellows, if the, <laughs> I've got a couple of trays of that here, so I don't know if that's going to be similar difficulty level as what I've already done or easier or harder, I don't know. So I guess we'll find out soon enough. Um, so yeah, maybe I am guessing a similar amount of time, maybe a bit longer for, for the second session, just because we've also got to count um, doing the border, which might be a bit time consuming because, you know, you've got all these blank white pieces. So that's going to be like going by shape um, instead of like color variation. And then, um, yeah, so as for like the puzzling experience, um, I actually found like some of this puzzle so far to be quite easy, like the dark blue and the, the kind of tealy blues were pretty easy. And even like the kind of browny orange here and this like limey kind of color were quite straightforward. But this whole sort of green section was fairly difficult. Started off easy and then the, the sort of, I guess, tones of green became so subtle and under my kind of like uh, warm, you know, dining room light, it became really hard to like tell the difference between the like subtle variations. So I think if you're going to do this puzzle, uh, you might have to either accept that your eyes are going to go a bit funky looking at staring at like these green subtle pieces or you might have to play around with different like lighting setups whether it's like daylight or a different lamp or something yeah so just something to note um but you know i still got through it it just was probably the part that took the longest now as for quality um overall i'm fairly impressed um i like the 
the fit of the pieces like they seem to fit nicely I haven't had a single false fit so I'm very impressed with that um, and it seems like you can probably do a puzzle pickup and I guess pick up sections I haven't actually had to really pick up sections because I've mostly just been like building onto like the colors that were there so like I actually st just followed the pattern all the way through that is my cat going bonkers running around the house so <laughs> excuse her um, but yeah like I originally I thought I'd be doing like different segments of it but I actually end up just sort of following the pattern through so because of that I wasn't really lifting up there she goes again <laughs> I wasn't really like having to lift up sections but yeah I think like judging by this you probably could and I think like undoing these yeah seems pretty easy like you might need two hands but it's not too much of a struggle um, so they're not yeah it's a comfortable fit like they're not too tightly wedged together but they're uh, tight enough that you can pick up large section, sections so yeah that's really good um, and yeah like I said no false fits um, the puzzle dust has been like I mean let me have a look there's a little bit but it's pretty minimal like it's not hasn't caused me any issues so yeah pretty pretty happy with with it it hasn't yeah it hasn't really bothered me um, and then the other thing I definitely haven't found any further damage pieces like you know apart from that tiny little one we found earlier I haven't spotted anything else so yeah really pleased with the like the quality of the pieces like nothing seems to be damaged or anything like that but my one con so far which isn't too too bad is that there is definitely sheen and a bit of glare um, like these like I said these aren't super glossy but like I can see there's a, a sort of patch of sheen going on there from the ring light um, so I was finding that happening a little bit while puzzling um, it wasn't too too much of a problem but it is sort of I guess something to be aware of again if you know when you're trying to like do this puzzle under certain lighting um, you might find it has a bit of glare and sheen which is a little bit frustrating because obviously there's so many like subtle color variations going on like you really want to be able to focus on it properly so it can be a little problematic but it wasn't too too bad I've definitely had worse um, so that's kind of all I really have to say about the quality I think yeah I think overall a very positive experience and like I love the image um, something I did do though was I went through my puzzle collection and started comparing the pieces of this to puzzles like puzzle brands that I already have because I felt like they kind of reminded me of some other brands so I didn't find an exact match but I found I think it was three different brands that were quite similar so the first one was Genuine Fred so if you've ever done any of their puzzles the pieces feel fairly similar these definitely feel more smooth but they're fairly close in thickness and they both have the same sort of cardboard backing um, and they kind of yeah they have a very similar feel so um, yes yeah, so if you like genuine Fred you probably like this um, the other one was pomegranate again pomegranate's a little bit more on the like it's different but there's similarities um, I think like pomegranate's probably a bit more matte and a little bit more like a matte linen finish than this um, yeah so this again is more smooth I would say and I can't remember if the backing was the same like they all had cardboard backings uh, but it, yeah it was similar again not exactly the same and then the last um, puzzle brand I found that again was similar was the Elena Essex puzzles um, not the round one I think that's a bit different but like just the normal sort of rectangle ones like Tiger Lounge um, they seem to be similar although if you remember um, do you know what the piece fit whether it's like loose or snug for the Elena Essex puzzles are because I even though I just did one recently for the life of me I cannot remember so whereas I think from memory Genuine Fred and Pomegranate hold together fairly similar to this but correct me if I'm wrong so if you know let me know in the comments I just sometimes I do so many puzzles that I like honestly can't retain all the puzzle information in my head um, yeah so anyway they're the three brands that I feel or that I have seen that seem to be the closest in match to this so I guess if you like any of those you might like this puzzle as well or any of the puzzles by four point puzzles I'm assuming they're all like the same sort of quality 
Um, so anyway, I think I have sort of chatted enough. Um, I'm yeah, pretty excited to do the rest of this and sort of see like how you know fast or slow or how challenging it's going to be. Um, there's some like pretty distinct colors like this sort of bright yellowy chartreusey color. It's pretty standout, so I feel like that might be fairly easy to place. And yeah, I feel like the color variations have been fairly, I mean, apart from the green, have so far been fairly distinct enough that I've been able to fairly easily figure out where they go. So um, yeah, I guess let's get back into puzzling. So it's actually been a few days since I last worked on this puzzle and finished it. Um, and you might notice my voice is sounding a bit on the croaky side and that's because I've been a bit sick the last week. Um, but here I am and we're gonna try and get through this pretty quickly so we can avoid coughing fits on camera. Um, so yeah, I really love how the puzzles turned out. I love the colors and the design, this cool like 3D swirly shape. I think it looks really awesome. Um, yeah, so I really, really enjoyed this as a gradient. I just thought it was a like fun and interesting alternate take on, you know, your classic gradient. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I did find it a bit trickier, this second session of puzzling than the first. Um, so the second session did take longer. It was three hours, um, whereas I think the first was like two, a bit under two and a half from memory. So all up, it took, I guess, including sorting to endpoint, five and a half hours, which I still think is pretty reasonable for a 1000 piece puzzle. I mean, I do usually find gradient puzzles to be a bit quicker and easier than, you know, your sort of normal like picture puzzle, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm not entirely surprised, but I, yeah, was expecting it to maybe take longer or be more difficult. But that being said, it was still difficult and had tricky parts. So uh, I think like I mentioned before, this I predicted that this white border and these white sections were going to be quite time consuming and they were, it was just, you know, going by piece shape pretty much. 
Um, but yeah, in the second session, I also found this orange section to be quite tricky. So um, unlike the first session where I just sort of followed the shape around, um, I sort of had to, to not do that in this session and instead just pick out like the bright yellows and like other colors and then leave the orange bit to last because it was just really hard to see the different subtle like color variations. Um, but that being said, I got there in the end and I didn't find anything super frustrating or super, super difficult. Um, and I think also it really, your lighting setup is gonna like have quite an impact on that as well. So yeah, that's definitely something to be aware of if you're doing, I guess any gradient puzzle really, but uh, this one, because the, like I found some of these sections quite hard to tell the difference between some of the pieces. So yeah, I think depending on your lighting, that's gonna play a part in how difficult you find it. Um, anyway, so let's talk quality. Um, yeah, I really like the quality. Um, I had an overall really positive and fun, enjoyable puzzling experience. So I love the fit of the pieces. There were no false fits at all. Um, I love that you can like, you know, pick up sections and I guess do a puzzle pickup. Um, but you can also still, you might have to use two hands, but you can still undo pieces relatively easy. So they're not so like tight together that you're gonna damage the puzzle when undoing it. Um, so that's important. And what else, I guess, yeah, the surface of the puzzle feels nice and smooth. I really like the sort of thickness of these pieces too. Like it all, they feel nice to handle. Um, they feel nice quality. I guess one of the things I, did find as a con or that I don't like so much is because the pieces are so smooth or just sort of what they're made from, there is some glare and sheen. So I can see the ring light now causing a bit of a glare spot on that corner. Um, I didn't have too many problems with it while puzzling a little bit here and there, but for the most part, it wasn't too bad, but it is something to again, be aware of and take note because we are dealing with like subtle color variations. Um, depending on what light you're under, it may cause some sheen. So yeah, that's just something to, I guess, keep in mind when working on this brand or this particular puzzle. Um, and then again, I didn't really have any issues with like damaged pieces. There might've been a couple tiny winnie bent bits, but nothing that I can really, that really comes to mind. There definitely wasn't anything that needed fixing or anything like that. So yeah, very pleased in general with the quality. And puzzle dust, there is like a little bit, like when I lift this up, there's definitely some specks under here and I'm pretty sure there was some left in the box, but for the most part, it really wasn't a problem at all. Um, but I'm just sort of letting you know in case you really hate puzzle dust, um, it's just something to note. But yeah, I, I didn't have a problem with it myself. So, so yeah, um, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this and yeah, I think if you're looking for a different type of gradient to do, I definitely recommend this one. So let's talk price. So I paid uh, pretty much 60 Australian dollars for this puzzle. And something I thought was interesting on the Four Point Puzzles website, this one's listed for 28 US dollars. Um, and I just thought it was interesting that the Australian price is pretty much double that of the US dollar. Um, and even though our exchange rate is not great at the moment it's still not usually like double that of like the american dollar so i'm guessing that the price here is just being put up more due to like you know uh import taxes or shipping you know and they have to make profit the people selling it here so yeah probably has to do with that um, it's pretty common for a lot of imported goods here to be more expensive here than they kind of would be overseas so is what it is, kind of annoying, but whatever. Um, but for $60 here, that is a fairly uh, high-end price for puzzles. So like a Raven's Burger generally for a 1,000 piece would be a lot cheaper than this. It would probably be like between $25 to $35, depending what it is, um, just to give you a rough idea. So this is like a definitely a high-end price. Um, and I guess the question is, is do I think this brand and puzzle are worth it for the price. And unfortunately I have to kind of say no, although I really like this brand and I, there's absolutely really nothing wrong with the quality or the brand or the artwork. I really love it all. And I definitely on its own can recommend it and, and really enjoy the experience. 
but I think for that $60 price, I just would expect a little bit more. Um, at least a resealable bag would be great. Um, particularly because those brands that I compared it to before, like Pomegranate, Elena Essex, and Genuine Fred, which are all very similar in quality to this, um, they're all, all a lot cheaper. And, you know, and some of them even come with like uh, maybe a poster, but at least a reusable or resealable bag. So just knowing that like I can get something very similar kind of quality for a fair bit cheaper in price makes it makes me kind of feel like, uh, you know, that this puzzle is not quite worth that high end price point. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, I guess like, yeah, personally, I probably wouldn't. I'd like to do more of these puzzles. I really enjoyed the brand but I don't really see myself paying the $60 to do them. Um, maybe if they were on sale or something, I might pick them up. Um, but yeah, for that price point, mm, I probably wouldn't unless I really couldn't live without it, something like that. Anyway, I guess uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this puzzle. Uh, do you enjoy gradients? Is this one that you've done or you'd like to try? Um, have you tried this brand before? Like maybe you tried some of the other puzzles and what did you think? And I guess if you're in the US as well, or North America, let me know what you think of the US price point for this puzzle. Do you think that's quite a reasonable price for this sort of quality and artwork and that sort of thing? Or do you think it's expensive? Like, yeah, I guess let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And if you wanna see more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can also find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore juby, where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.